hello very good evening to all of you thank you so much for joining this webinar hope all of you are doing great healthy and safe myself sunil and uh, along with my colleague uh, we have ronak b we are here to discuss with you a few of the latest excel functions and formulas updated by microsoft under office 365 along with that we will also cover a few of the productivity announcement tool as well using excel uh, the, all the most of the function what we'll be covering today will be packaged under uh, microsoft 365 business and above and as the title of this webinar indicates it is advanced excel training hence we will not be covering any of the basic excel formulas and uh, to give a gist of the things what we are going to cover today we will be covering functions like um, text join filter date formatting x lookup indirect independent filter searchable dropbox format test table slicers private chart and slicers excel dashboarding and ideas well uh, enjoy the rest of the session my colleague ronak will take over through from here for a live demo ronak please take over the session thank you thank you so much sunil uh, good evening one and all my name is rona and i'll be taking you through to the first half of this advanced excel training session without further ado let's jump right into it i'll be sharing my screen now So, as Sunil would have explained, you will be going through multiple formulas of functions one by one. And the first function which I'm going to be talking about is the unique function. Unique function. What does a unique function do? Unique function gives me unique number of characters in a data set. Assume you have a data set which has a character repeating multiple times. And you want to find a list of characters which are unique. The unique list. Now, this function would give me right, that. Traditional ways, what are the traditional ways which we used to do? We used to either use conditional formatting or we used to remove duplicates. But then that was a tedious task which involves two or three steps. But now Excel has given me one formula which will give me the unique number of uh, characters in one shot. Here I have a data set which has the year, category, subcategory and amount. Assume I want to find the list of unique characters in this category column. So what I need to do is I need to click on is equal to unique and Array. Array is basically a, uh, Excel asking me which is the column or which is the entire data set where you want to find the unique characters. So here, since I want the unique number of categories, I'm going to select the entire category column, press F4 to freeze the cells and click on enter. So as you can see, the unique function has given me six uh, characters which are repeating multiple times in categories. So these are the six unique values. Now this uh, function can be used for multiple cells as well. Assume I want category and subcategory unique values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press unique once again. And this time under my array, I'm going to select category and subcategory and select the entire both the columns. I'm going to click on F4 to just freeze the cells and press enter. Now, as you can see, there are 14 list of categories which are repeating, which has multiple subsets. But now every category and subcategory is unique. It's not repeating. Now, there's a basic distinction between distinct value and unique value. Distinct value are the categories, are the, are the values which are repeating multiple times. But if you want a list of uh, uh, values which are repeating only once, then unique function can give me that as well. Now, to activate that, to use that, we need to press the unique function once again. And you need to select the array again. So I'm going to select category and subcategory once again. I'm going to freeze it and I'm going to use the comma. Now comma will shift the next function. Now here Excel asks me whether it's by column or by rows. Assume uh, this, uh, the data set right now it's in columnar form. Assume you have a row wise uh, da uh, data set. Uh, Excel can do the unique function there as well. Since this is my columnar wise data format, I'm going to uh, use it like this. So I'm going to press the comma once again, because I don't want to change anything. Now the second part, it asks me whether you want return items that appear exactly once or return every distinct item return every distinct item is the default function which you have seen right now it's giving me the items which are repeating multiple times but if you want only those items which are repeating which are there exactly once then i need to press true so i'm going to press true or you can press one also so i'm i'm typing true and then clicking on enter so as you can see now this formula has given me gadget laptop entertainment iPod. So these are the two categories and subcategories which are appearing only once in my entire data set. So this is the first function of unique. Now 
I'm going to shift to the next uh, function, which is concatenate versus concat versus text join. Concatenate is the old formula which most of us would have been using, which combines multiple cells and gives me one in one cell all the three uh, cells, the the characters in all the three cells. So earlier we either used to use the concatenate function or the AND function, which used to combine multiple cells. I'm going to uh, take you through through concatenate function and how tedious that was. So I'm going to use the concatenate function. Now concatenate function asks me which is the text one, text two and text three. So here in my data set, I have city here and unique a number. So in concatenate function, I have to select each cell and separate it by comma. So this is my first text, this is my second text, and this is my third text. And then I'm going to press enter. Now concatenate function has combined all the three cells. I'm going to copy paste this formula or use control D so that the formula applies in all the cells. So this was my concatenate function. Excel has come up with a better concatenate function named as concat. Sure, in concatenate function, you need to press comma and select each cell individually. But in concat uh, function, that is taken care of. So in concat function, I don't have to select each cell separately. What I can do is I can press shift and I can use my arrow bars and select all the three cells in one shot. After doing this, I can press enter and you can see concatenate and concat works in the same way. But here, I don't have to select each cells individually. I press control D to copy paste the formula in the entire data set. Now, after concat is done, I'm going to take you through to a next version of a better formula, which is text join. Now, text join is a new function which will give me a data set or data value by using a delimiter. Now, a delimiter is something like a slash, a comma, or a hash, or a hyphen. Anything you can use to delimit, basically have a separator between multiple cells. So I'll take you through, through this formula. Now, you need to press text join. After pressing text join, the first uh, thing Excel asked me, what is the delimiter? Now, delimiter here, assume I'm going to use a hyphen. Now, to use any delimiter, you need to uh, have it under a double quotes. So I'm going to open the double quote. I'm going to press on hyphen and I'm going to close the double quote. So Excel has understood hyphen is the one which I want to use. And then I'm going to press comma and then it asks me ignore empty. So what it's, uh, Excel is asking me is what if there are empty cells in this? Do you want to ignore them or do you want to include them? By default, Excel is going to include them. But if you want to ignore them, you need to press one or true. I'm going to use the default function or just press on comma once again. Excel will understand that it's we are using the default function that we want to include the empty cells as well. Now, Excel is asking me which is my text one, text two, text three. So here I'm going to select text one, text two, text three, Mumbai 1920 and one lakh. So I'm, I'm going to press enter. So here you can see what text join has done is it has combined all the three cells with the uh, hyphen in between. I'm going to copy paste or use control D to, uh, 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 to put this formula in the entire data uh, range. Now, these are the three functions which you can use to combine multiple cells based on your own uh, criteria. The next function which I'm going to be taking you through is the filter array function. Filter array, this is one of the most dynamic and the most useful function which uh, many people would benefit from. Now, what filter array function does is it's, it creates a new data set based on the criteria given. So here you can basically tell Excel that this is my criteria. And after looking up to this criteria, I want a final answer. So this will do exactly that. Earlier, manual, we used to manually put filters and then we used to get the final outcome. Here I have two similar data sets. I'm going to hide one of the data sets because I'm going to be using it later. So this is my first data set, which has a unique ID, a city, product name, and the sales amount. Now I'm going to use a simple filter function. For this simple filter function, assume I'm giving a condition or I'm telling the uh, telling Excel that my criteria is sales amount. Assume I want all this uh, sales amount, which is more than 30, assume 35,000. This you can keep changing whenever you want and the function will work. So how, how to use a filter function? So just press is equal to filter. Now after filter, it's asking me array. Now for array, we need to select the entire data range because at the end, we want the entire data range to come back. So I've selected the entire data range. I'm clicking on F4 to freeze the cells, comma. 
include. Now, include means what is the criteria which you want Excel to look up. Now, include, since I've put sales amount over here, I'm going to select the entire sales amount. Now, here I've selected the entire sales amount, only the column of sales amount. I'm freezing it by clicking F4. And now I'm pressing on greater than. So, greater than. Greater than, since I've put 35,000 over here, I'm going to press on 35,000 and click enter. So now, as you can see, Excel has understood that 35,000 is the criteria and it's giving me back the entire data range and it's putting a filter of more than 35,000. So now this 35,000 can be changed to 30,000 and Excel will again use the formula and give me every cell which is more than 30,000. Now, to take you through, I'm going to use the next formula, a better one. Here, I'm going to give this entire data range into a table. I'm going to change this data set into a table. Now, how can I do that? So I'm going to uh, just unhide the column and get the another data set. So here, I'm going to use this. So in my second part, I'm making a table reference. Now, how to make a table reference? Table reference you can make by basically selecting the entire data set. I selected the entire data set and now I'm pressing Control T. So control T will change this data set into a table. It will create a table. And here I'm going to uh, press, uh, uh, keep the uh, check on my table as headers because since my table has headers, I'm going to keep it checked. So I'm going to click on OK. So as I clicked on OK, now this entire data uh, uh, set has changed into a table. And a new uh, 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 data tool has appeared, which is named of data design, table design. I'm going to click on table design and I'm going to rename my table. Since it's table two, I'm just going to change it to sales. And I pressed enter. So now Excel has understood that this is a new table, which is named as sales. Now in my second reference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the filter function once again, filter array. Now under array, I don't have to again, select the entire data set. Since I've named a table, my Excel understands that this is a sales table. So I'm just going to click on sales. So you, as you can see, Excel has understood that there is a table which in the name of sales. I'm going to press on tab to select this and I'm going to use comma. Now includes, includes in the, se in the second formula, I'm going to show you how to select cities. So I'm going to go back to my data set. I'm going to select the entire city. Okay. And I'm going to use is equal to earlier. I had used more than sign because I wanted more than 30,000. Here, I'm going to use is equal to because since this is a text, I want exact match. So under city, I'm going to press enter. Here, I'm not specified the city. Assume I'm specifying the city as Bangalore. So as you can see, the filter function has worked and it's given me only Bangalore related data over here. So this is by using the table reference. Now, I'm going to show you a better way of using filter function by creating a dropdown. Now here, you had to type Bangalore or assume Chennai. And after typing it, the function works. What if you want the entire list of cities in one shot? That you can do by creating a dropdown. How to create a dropdown? Now, first, for creating a dropdown, first you need to understand which are the unique cities or product name which you have in your data set. To get that, you can use the first function which I explained earlier, the unique function. Now, unique function will give me the unique uh, number of uh, unique names of cities or product name. Assume I'm taking product name for the time being. I'm going to select the entire product name and I'm going to press enter. As you can see, I've got the entire product name. So there are around six products which are unique over here. Now I'm going to create a drop down list using this product name. How to create a drop down list? So just go to any cell. I'm going over here since I've named it as product name. And in this cell, I need to go under data. Under data tools, there is a specific column called as data validation. I'm going to click on data validation and here a dialog box will open. Now in this dialog box, I need to select on list allow under allow. There is something called as list. So list basically uh, makes Excel understand that I want a list of items or a drop down list. And then it will ask me the source. So I need to specify the source of where that list is. Now, since I've created a unique list of product name, I'm going to select this entire range and I'm going to press enter and I'm going to click on OK. So what this has done is Excel has understood that I want a drop down list and the drop down list has come over here. As you can see, there's a drop down list of all the items. So I don't need to type on anything. 
Excel has already understood and given me a drop down list. And the second criteria, assuming I'm keeping amount itself. So here I can specify 15,000, which I can change later also. And now I'm going to use the formula filter once again. Before using the formula, since I have two criteria over here, now to make Excel understand that there are two criteria, Excel should understand that uh, in Excel language. So now we understand that I want criteria one and criteria two. So we are using and, but Excel understands and as an asterisk or the multiplication sign. And Excel understands or as a plus sign. So I'm going to use the asterisk sign to uh, include both the criteria. So again, using my filter function, my array, my array is my sales table, comma, include. So first I'm going to include the product name. So for including the product name, I'm going to go ahead to the table, select on the entire product name, okay, and use is equal to. Is equal to the product name which I've specified over here, okay, and I'm going to use the asterisk sign, and. So whenever you use the asterisk sign, uh, you need to understand before and after you need to insert it in uh, uh, brackets because this is one function which Excel needs to work on. So I'm closing a bracket and I'm opening a bracket at the first. So I put this entire formula in one bracket and I'm going to open the second bracket and I'm going to go for amount. I'm going to go to amount. I'm going to select the entire amount range and I'm going to use greater than sign, greater than and equal to. You can use both of it together. So Excel will understand you need greater than and is equal to 15,000. So here I've selected that and I'm going to close the bracket and I'm going to press on enter. So you can see Excel uh, filter function has given me only paper which has more than 15,000. So this you can change it anytime and the function will keep on working and you can change the amount as well. You can put multiple filters as well. So this was filter function, which is very dynamic. And once you start using it, you will understand how beneficial it is. The next uh, uh, function I'm going to be taking you through is formatting date. Date formatting is one of the most tedious tasks which anyone faces because multiple ERPs, many ERPs uh, extract reports in different date formats. Now to get a desired date format takes a lot of time. It consumes a lot of time. Now, 95% of the date formats, any types of date formats can, will get fixed by using category one, which I'm going to be taking you through. But if the, the 5%, which doesn't uh, give me the exact date format by after, even after using category one, we'll have to use category two by performing two additional steps. So first I'm going to be taking you through to category one. Now there are three steps. We need to delimit. Then we need to change the column data and then we need to press control shift three. So here I've kept multiple types of date format. This date format has a text and uh, the time. Here there is date and time separated by space. And here there are multiple types of date format, date, month, year, month, date, and year, here's month and date. So all of it will be using the same type of three steps. So here I've understood that my date format is being separated. So the date format, after the date format, there is a, a text or a character. So I've just listed down it over here for better understanding. So there is a T. In the second part, there is space. And then remaining cases, there is no separator. There's no delimiter. So in the first part, I'm, I've copy pasted the same thing over here. And I'm here, I'm going to be using the formula. So what you need to do is you need to head to data. Again, you need to head to data. And under data, there is something called under data tools, there is text to column. You need to click on text to column. So a wizard opens and here you need to keep delimited. Okay. You need to select on delimit, go on next. Since in the first set, there is a delimiter, which is T. I need to separate it by using this. So I'm going to head to others and others. I'm going to type T in the data uh, preview. You can see that, okay, the, the T was here. And now Excel has understood that the first part is the date and the second part is some something else. Now I'm going to head to next and see Excel selects this. Now the first part I've selected since this is the date, this is the final outcome, which I want. I've selected this Excel will automatically select the first column and uh, under column data format, I'll select on date. Uh, as I've selected date. Now there are multiple types of formats, which Excel gives. Now, since I know this is your month and date, I'm going to click on YMD. 
after clicking on YMD, I'm going to click on finish and there will be a small dialog box which will open here. I'm just going to click on this, uh, just going to click on OK. So as I've clicked on OK, you can see that the date is separated and the time is separated. Now, what you can do is you can just press on Control Shift 3. After pressing on Control Shift 3, now the date has come in a desired format. We have got the date in the desired format and the remaining text has got separated. Same way you can do for this, uh, the second thing also. Here, the delimiter is space. So I'm going to head to data, text to column, delimited. Next, here, there is no character. So I'm just going to click on space or you can go in others and you can click on space bar. So you can provide one space. So after providing one space, you can go to next. And here, I'm going to click on date. And this is year, month and date format. So again, I'm going to click on YMD, go to finish, and OK. So as you can see, the date is separated, the time is separated. Now, in the date, I'm just going to select the entire range and press Control Shift 3. So it's given me in my exact date format. So if you use the same formula here also without using the delimiter, I'm going to show you for one, anyone. Assume I'm going to go for date, month, and year. Text to column, delimiter, next. Here, there is no delim delimiter, if you can see. It's just the date, but in a different format. So I'm not going to click on anything, okay? And I'm going to head to next. i am just click on date. Since this is date, month, and year format, which is already selected, I'm going to click on finish. And you can see the date format has changed. Control Shift 3, and you have got the date. So this will solve 95% of your problems with the date format. But assume there are some characters which doesn't have the same date format or the this the first category doesn't work so what you can do is you need to press you need to um, do two additional steps which i'm going to be taking you through now assume this is the data set this is the date format and here i'm going to start you need to do the same way text to column delimiter okay so what you need to do over here is you need to segregate the date month and the year separately in three separate columns so how you can do that whatever is the delimiter between these three things Okay, you need to specify that in others. So the date is going to come separately, the month is going to come separately, and the year is going to come separately. I'm going to go head on next. And here, I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to keep it on general and do finish. I'm going to click on OK. So you can see the date has come over here, the month has come separately, and the year has come separately. Now, the second step, which is an important step, what you need to do is you need to change year to YY. That is, if it's 2019, you need to change it to 19. If it's 2020, you need to change it to 20. So this can be done by a simple control F and replace function. So what I've done is I've pressed on control F and then I've clicked on replace. So find what? I need to find 2019, replace it with 19. I'm, do, I'm gonna do replace all. So here 2019 has been changed to 19. And same way I'm gonna use 2020 to 20. And I'm gonna click replace all. So as you can see, 2019 and 20 has changed to 19 and 20. Now you can use the text join function. Yes, the text join function which I've uh, taken you through earlier. So now text join function, I need the delimiter as uh, slash and I'm going to put slash under double uh, uh, inverted commas. So slash two times comma and then the text. So I'm going to, I need to combine these three. I'm going to press enter and I'm going to Press Control D to uh, copy paste the formula or, uh, in the entire data range. Then the next step, the fourth step is pasting values only. So what I'm going to do is now Excel. Now, if I use Control Shift 3, Excel is not changing it to the date format because it's still in the formula. So I need to paste the values only. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste only the values. So I'm going to paste the values only over here. After you paste the value, Excel will throw an error. So this uh, yellow uh, warning sign is the error which Excel is showing. Just click on that error and then select on convert XX to 20XX. So as, as you click that, Excel has changed it and made it to a date format. Now, just by pressing Control Shift 3, it's changed to date format. So here are the two, two ways where the date could be changed and the desired date can be achieved. 
the next part and the most important function which Excel has provided is by replacing VLOOKUP and uh, HLOOKUP and index match into XLOOKUP. Now, XLOOKUP is a dynamic function which can be used, which replaces VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, and which solves majority of the problems of remembering and uh, changing the data. Now, so what XLOOKUP, how, how is it more advantageous than X, uh, VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP? Now, in XLOOKUP, you don't have to remember the column index number or row index number in VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP respectively. Then, you don't have to worry about the arrangement of data. The data can be on your left or on your right, above or below, as the case may be. XLOOKUP will work. And XLOOKUP allows, uh, basically, uh, in a VLOOKUP, if an error used to appear, Basically, if the VLOOKUP doesn't use to capture or the data, the master data set didn't use to have, uh, happen to have the filter which you're giving, then it used to throw as NA. Okay, and you, you need to give an additional function of if error to change that NA. But in XLOOKUP, there's an inbuilt formula where you can specify if there's an error, what the formula needs to do. So I'm going to take you through that. First, I'm just going to show you VLOOKUP, how VLOOKUP used to work. So I'm going to press VLOOKUP. So look up and the bar in this data set and give me the amount. So I need to always, I need, I had to remember column index number three. So if I press column index number three, only then my VLOOKUP used to work. So you can see Ahmedabad 2500, the first cell VLOOKUP is going to look for Ahmedabad. The first uh, answer it's going to return. And I'm going to copy paste this formula entirely. Now, as you can see towards the end, Pune. Now, Pune doesn't appear in my data set. So it's giving me NA. So to replace this NA, I need to use additional formula of if error. Now, in VLOOKUP, we have to do that. But in XLOOKUP, we don't have to do that. Now, I'm slowly going to be taking you through XLOOKUP and how to use an XLOOKUP. Z equal to XLOOKUP. Now, XLOOKUP will ask me for lookup value. Sim as you, you used to do in VLOOKUP, I need to select the first criteria, the city. I want to look up Ahmedabad, comma, look up array. Where, from where do you want to look up Ahmedabad? So column B is where Ahmedabad is. So I'm gonna select the entire column B and click on F4 to freeze the cell, comma, return array. What is the final outcome you want? Final outcome, I want amount. So I'm gonna select the entire amount, freeze it once again. And then if you can see, once I press comma, there Excel asks me if not found. So what Excel is asking me is what if Ahmedabad is not there in your entire data set, just like Pune. So what you want the final outcome to be yes. So here in double inverted commas, if you want to put a text, so you can open the double inverted commas and just type not found or whatever you want to put in. So I put in uh, that in double inverted commas. I'm going to close my bracket and click enter. So similarly, XLOOKUP has worked and I'm going to do control D on my entire data range to get the formula. So if you can see in Pune, using VLOOKUP, I used to get as NA, but in XLOOKUP, since I've specified specifically that if it's not formed, I want uh, the, the cell to be returned as not formed. I've got not formed. So this is how XLOOKUP works. Now with XLOOKUP, there are multiple additional features which you get. Now, since Ahmedabad has 2500 as the first value, so VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP by default will give me 2500. But assume you want something which is the latest. Assume Ahmedabad is repeating five times over here and you want the latest, the last value which is there in front of Ahmedabad, that is 3500. Can you get that? With XLOOKUP, you can. So I'll, I'll show you how. Now, you need to press the same formula once again. XLOOKUP, search for Ahmedabad from the city. So first I'm going to press city, freeze it, press comma, then return array. What do you, what is the final outcome I want? I want the amount. I'm going to press F4 once again, comma, if not found. So again, I'm going to press not found in double inverted commas, press comma. So now it comes as match mode. Match mode, I'm going to be taking you through a little later. I'm going to press once again, comma, now search mode. Now search mode, there is something called as search first to last. First to last is the default function which uh, XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP used to do. Now search first to last means Ahmedabad. The first Ahmedabad, what is the return uh, value against the first Ahmedabad? It used to give me that. But there is something called as search last to first under minus one. So just by pressing minus one and closing the bracket, Excel will give me 3500. So what 
uh, VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP is doing is it is searching Ahmedabad. The last Ahmedabad which is appearing, the late, the last Ahmedabad, against that what value is there, 3500, it's giving me that. Similarly for Bangalore, it's giving me 4750. You can see it over here. So this is how XLOOKUP could be used uh, from first to last and last to first. Now the next part, the match mode. Now for match mode, there are two types. So first I'm going to be taking you through one of it and then the next one. So I'm going to hide the second part. So I've hidden that part. So assume you have a data set of salary. So up to 15,000, you don't want to give any increment. So up to 45,000, you need to give 5% increment. So for understanding, so less than 15,000, there's no increment. 15,000 and 1 rupee to 45,000, you want 5% uh, increment to be given. Now, you could do this by using the if functions, but you know, using if functions is a tedious job where you need to uh, give if multiple times. But by using XLOOKUP, you can do it in one shot. Now, XLOOKUP has that feature. Now, what you want to search, lookup value is my monthly salary. I'm going to keep my salary as my lookup value, comma, lookup array. I'm going to click on salary. This is the master. So I'm going to click on F4. And what is the return array? I want the increment percentage. Okay. Now, if not found, you can specify something over here. Then there is something called as match mode. By default, Excel searches for exact match. What VLOOKUP used to do and what XLOOKUP does by default is exact match. Exact match meaning it will search for 90,000 over here. But since 9,000 is not there, it will throw me an error. But here, I don't want an exact match. I want a match which is exact match or the next higher match or the next larger item, which is under plus one. Okay, you just can press one or plus one. Anything, Excel will understand. Press on enter. And I've just copy pasted that formula. So now, under, uh, under in front of 90,000, I've got 15%. So how Excel has understood this? Excel has gone over here. Since 90,000 is between 75,000 and one rupee and one lakh rupees, against that there's 15%. Excel has given me 15%. So you can see Excel can do that as well. Now, similarly, this was exact or next higher match. I can do this for exact or lesser value as well. Here, the, the, the change you need to do is just press minus one instead of one. So I'm hiding this. So for understanding minus one, so less than 45,000. So entirely for less than 45,000, I want 0%. So more than 45,000, less than 75,000, I want 5% and same way. This is for understanding, I've kept it like this. Same way, I need to use the XLOOKUP. LOOKUP value will be my monthly salary, comma. It has the LOOKUP array will be my salary. I'm gonna freeze it, comma. And the final outcome, the return array, what I want is my increment percentage. I'm gonna freeze it, comma. If not found, I don't want. Under match mode, I'm gonna use minus one. So minus one is exact match or next smaller item. I'm gonna close the bracket, press enter. I'm going to copy paste this formula, use control D for the entire data range. So if you can see over here, 90,000, 90,000 is in this range between 75,000 to 99,999, 10%. It has given me 10%. So this formula has worked entirely and you don't have to use the if functions multiple times. And the third part, the third advantage of XLOOKUP. Now XLOOKUP, what happens in XLOOKUP and VLOOKUP? In VLOOKUP, the formula crashes uh, uh, multiple times if in your master data set, there is an addition or division of columns. So I'm just going to explain you how that ha used to happen. I'm going to use the simple VLOOKUP formula. I'm going to search the unique ID from this data range. And I want the final outcome as my amount. So comma three comma zero, enter. I'm going to copy paste this VLOOKUP formula entirely. And similarly, I'm going to use XLOOKUP as well. My lookup value will be my unique ID, comma. I want uh, the lookup array will be this, comma. The final outcome I want amount. So I'm going to freeze it, press enter. So my VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP has worked perfectly. But what happens is, what if I add or delete a column over here? Assume in my master data set, I'm adding or deleting a column. So since I've added a column over here, my VLOOKUP has changed. Now my VLOOKUP is taking the third uh, column index and giving me the final outcome as city. Now, but if you see XLOOKUP, XLOOKUP is still intact. 
Xlookup is giving me amount as it is. Now assume I delete a column. Now if I delete a column, my VLOOKUP will give me a reference error because there is no uh, column index number three over here because there is only two. But my XLOOKUP is still intact. So this is how uh, VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP works, and it's very advantageous to use XLOOKUP now. So guys, uh, this was the first part of the Excel training session which I have taken you through. I'll just I'll just uh, uh, run you through the things which I have taken you through. So there was unique function which gives me unique uh, list of values. Then there was concatenate versus concat versus text join which combines multiple cells. Then I taught you about the filter function. Filter function which gives me a new data set based on any criteria which I'm giving. Then formatting of dates. There are two types of date format, one with three steps and one with five steps. So by using these three steps, you can get your desired date format. Then XLOOKUP. So in the first part, I taught you how XLOOKUP works and how XLOOKUP you can use from first to last and last to first. Then in the second part, I taught you about the match category, how to use the match category, uh, uh, exact or uh, uh, next lesser match, exact or next higher match. And in the third part, I just it just explained you how using VLOOKUP, uh, using XLOOKUP, apologies, using XLOOKUP is more advantageous because it stays intact and anything, if anything happens to your uh, master data set, your VLOOKUP will fail, but XLOOKUP won't fail. So for the next half of the session, Sunil is going to be taking you through. So I'm handing it over to Sunil. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, thank you so much, Sonak, for taking us through all the new array functions which are introduced in Excel 2019. Uh, let us go through the next function, that is indirect function. What indirect function will do? It returns the value as per uh, name reference and allows a dynamic reference to sheet names. What do you mean by name reference? In Excel, there is something called name box. If, if you're able to see this text box, there's something written called name box. In that box, uh, balance is written. It means uh, the cell references C12 to C14 have been named as balance. Similar way, D12 to D14 are named as Tata and E12 to E14 are named as Mahindra. How to give name reference in Excel? Just select any of the rows and columns that you want to give in the name reference and go to this uh, name box, remove the cell reference, whatever is there, and type your own names and click enter. Excel will give a name for the selected cell range. Okay, using this, how do we inculcate it inside indirect, indirect function? Suppose here, I'll write a function called sum of indirect of G12. What is there in G12? A name called by name called Reliance is there. What is the uh, Reliance name defines the cell which are uh, situated in C12 to C14. And on top of that uh, indirect function, we have given a sum function. It means uh, I'm trying to tell Excel saying that sum the indirect of G12. It means uh, sum the cells which are named as reliance. That is what exactly the function is trying to do. Now, if I change it to Tata, the uh, cell reference automatically will take the name of Tata, which is nothing but D12 to D14. It will give us some of that. This is using the, uh, using name reference and indirect function. This is how we can perform our uh, basic uh, uh, arithmetical functions inside Excel. What if these tables are not in the same sheet, but they're in a different sheet like this? Reliance, Tata Group, and Mahindra. These are the different sheets wherein data is situated. How do I perform uh, formulas on those sheets? In the typical scenario, if you re refer a cell, for example, Tata E18, Tata Group E18, this cell, if you re refer in a different sheet, the Excel will give the reference like this. It will give it equals to single key, key, key inverted comma, the sheet name will come. It will end with a single generate comma, exclamatory sign, and it will give the cell reference. How to using this, how to use this inside the entire function and make a dynamic dynamic reference to sheet types. Here, I have given a sum of C8 to C10. If you see in the, any of the sheet, the January, February, and March month sales are situated in uh, cell reference C8 to C10. So that is gonna fix. Only thing what is going to change is 
my sheet name freelance, sheet name data group, and sheet name Mahindra is going to change. How to make the sheet dynamic? We have to use the function indirect inside. We have to give a single in order to come in double quotes because that is by default will be captured when you give the different sheet reference. I'm concatenating it using and symbol. Then the sheet name. The sheet name, if you want to make it dynamic, I am giving a reference to a column G18. Anything what, what, what is typed in G18, it should search that sheet name. That's what I'm trying to tell to Excel. And I'm concatenating that with fixed string, that is single he, he denoted comma, exclamatory sign, and C8 to C10 and close the double bracket. It, it means the single he, he denoted comma, exclamatory sign, and the range of the cell to be summed up, that will not change. That we want to keep it intact. And comma, I'm given a condition called true. What do we mean by true or false inside a tender function? There are two, two, two types of self reference available in Excel. One is even style, one is RN sequence style. Even style means the one which I am using. Here, my columns are referred by ABCD, that is alpha, and rows are referred by 1, 2, 3, 4, that is numeric. That is called even style. And in some cases, in some of the Excel will give you also R1, C1 style of cell reference. What does that mean? All the columns will be named by C1, C2, C3, C4, and all the rows will be named by R1, R2, R3, R4. It depends on, depending on which uh, style you are using. So accordingly, you can select true or false. In my case, I am using a one style. That's why I will take it as a true and click on enter. Now what the function is doing, it is searching a file name called Reliance and it is going to that sheet and taking a sum of uh, cells which are situated in the range of C8 to C10 and it is giving us the outcome. If I change it to data group, it will go to the sheet of data group and it will sum the cells which are in the range of C8 to C10 and give us the outcome. And similarly, if I click Mahindra, it will go to sheet called Mahindra and then it will perform the summation function for C8 to C10. This is how we can use it to make the sheet name as dynamic. Now using internet function, we can do little more advanced elements as well. Uh, you might have heard of a dependent dropdown. What does that dependent dropdown means or dependent filter means? Suppose Ronak has already told you how to create this list in Excel. So now if I select India as a country, my office is could be in India situated in either Delhi, Bangalore or Mumbai or Pune. I, I want to see only those cities which are appearing in the country called India. Similarly, if I select USA, in the next drop down, I want to see only cities which are belonging to USA. Meaning thereby, this office, the second filter should be depending on the first filter what I'm gonna select here. Correct, this is called dependent filter. So how do we create that? Again, I have made a, I have here I have a left hand set two tables. One table is name reference table, second table is lookup table. In this name reference table, how I showed earlier, the India, US and UK, these uh, cell range that is B8 to B10 are named as country. Similarly, C8 to C11 are named as India, uh, D8 to D11 are named as USA, and uh, E8 to E12 are named as UK. So this is the name reference I'm given. And below is a lookup table wherein my country, and in that country where my office is situated, and the city in which where my office is situated, and the address in that city where my office is actually situated. So now you might have seen this functionality in some of the websites wherein assume act service uh, provider, you want to take us uh, act uh, fiber net, you want to see whether in, in your area uh, act is there or not. So what we will do, we will select the kind of city in that area, in that uh, sub area, like that, like that we will select. Wherein if you see the second filter may, whatever the things will come, that is depending on what you give in, in the first filter drop down. Similar to what we to do in Excel as well. So what we'll do on the country column, we'll do a list, list of countries. How to do that? Go to data, data validation, and say my source equal to country. Country is nothing but the name which I given to these three cells, one, two, three. The same thing equals to countries, country if I give, it will take in a drop, drop down the list of all three countries. Second one, which is the key here, here also I'm gonna use data and data validation. Here 
I'm going to use the function indirect. How I'm using it equals to indirect into bracket H8. What is H8? H8 is nothing but this cell, the previous filter, what we're going to select. The previous filter indirect, indirect of that previous cell we're trying to say. What does that mean? Indirect of USA, it means New York, Florida, Texas, and Miami. Indirect of UK means London, Manchester, Liverpool, and so on. Indirect of India means Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai, Pune. Accordingly, it will show you only those name references which are named as per the filter number one. If you see, if you filter UK here, it will go to indirect of UK, that is nothing but these five cities. And in the second drop down, it will show you only that one. Now your Excel will look like a searchable drop down, which will be which you generally see in the websites. I think you understand the utility of indirect in making a dependable filters. Okay. Next one will go to searchable drop down. What do you mean by searchable drop down? For example, here, if you take this drop down. And this drop down is uh, uh, taken from the list of customers. Here, there are 32 list of customers. In this drop down, all 32 names will come and appear. I don't want to search the intended name which I want. I want to make it very simple. I will type initial three or four alphabets or the alphabets which are which are being part of this customer name, so that Excel should show me only those names wherein the alphabets are contained. How to do that? We'll use a back to back in a sequential order, these five functions, and we can achieve that result. Time being, what I will do is the source, I will take it from the D2 reference, that is search box, and later I will give that control here in P12 row of searchable drop down sheet. This is our ultimate sheet. Time being, I'm showing it on a working sheet. Okay. First, let us use the function called search, S E A R C H. What search and in that put this search box string there and close the bracket. What search will do? Instead of search box, I'll give P A U L Paul and equals search this. Find the text. So this is what the text which I'm gonna find. That is Paul, comma. Next argument is within text. This text where should I search? I should search in my customer name list. Take this whole range and close your bracket and hit enter. Now what Excel is trying to do is wherever the word P A U L Paul is contained in the name, it is giving a name ref number reference as one. Here also Paul is there. 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 And rest all the places Paul is not there, and it is giving a value error here. Correct. Now we got to know which all the uh, customer names are having a string called P A U L Paul. Next thing is let us cap it up this function using is number. I, what is number will do? If the given number is, if the given cell has a number, it will, it will give an answer as true. If given cell is not having a number, it will give an outcome as false. Now here, Paul Garza is there. Earlier there was a number called one. Now that is converted into true or false, correct? Now we, need, we don't want this false outcome at all because we're interested in only those names wherein Paul is there. So I want to filter out only true answers. How to do it? As Donak has already explained you, we'll use the function called filter. Filter, comma, array. What is that array that you're gonna search? My array is my customer name. Take this whole array, comma, and is number formula. Is number may, I want to filter only true. By default, it will filter out only true and close the floor bucket and hit enter. Now what Excel has done is it has taken only True values and exclude the fault of false values. Now I have only uh, the string which has P A U L in it. If you see here, Paul Hill is coming twice. I don't want to commit twice. I want to make it a unique. As Jonak has already explained to you the function unique, cap this fun, uh, for formula with unique. Unique of this. So now the Paul Hill which was appearing twice, now it is appearing only once. Excel has uh, made, made it as a unique. Now, now if you want to use, or if, if you want this name of the uh, customer uh, to be appeared in a sorted way, that is A to Z. Only thing what you have to use is just cap it up this function by sort. Now what Excel will do, all these names, it will sort 
in an alphabetical order. Correct. Now we got our outcome. Now the reference here is the D2. Now what I will do is I will remove this reference and give it back here because this is our ultimate final deliverable sheet. Okay. Now coming back to this sheet, how to make this drop down? As you already know, go to data, data validation, list, and in list, what you have to do is you have to come to this uh, master data and select this first row wherein you have uh, written the formula and it should be followed by a hashtag symbol. Why hashtag symbol? Suppose in the name in the name of Paul, there are two, three names. I want to select all those three names. If only one name is there, only first size should come. If you want to give that effect, you have to do the uh, you have to end the formula with the hashtag. What hashtag will do? It will select the fill down uh, uh, array values as well. Then go to error alert screen and by default this show the error alert after invalid data is entered this by default will be checked this checkbox will be ticked now you have to make it untick and click on ok and how to pick the company name as per customer name is simple just use a text lookup function as it has already explained you you will get your company name from this master data table depending on the customer what you select in the drop down so let us type all and click on this drop down if you see only those three names wherein Paul is there that is only visible if you click one of them the company wherein that person works that company will be automatically picked if I do Rob so there are quite a few names which are appearing in the name uh, which contains the string of ROB all the names will come any of one if you pick the his corresponding company will come Dan to so click on Dan there are three names which contains the word DAN if you click the, any of them, the corresponding company will be visible. This is how you can create a searchable Dropbox and uh, uh, focus your uh, drop down list so that it will be easy for you to select and you, you need not have to waste your time while searching a lot of content in the drop down, be it 50, be it 100, or whatever be the number of drop down lists are there. You can uh, get a focused review by way of searchable drop down list. I hope this is very clear. Let us move to the next function. It's not a function, it's actually a tool or a formatting tool, I would say. So in Excel, this is a table, normal table, what you would have created in Excel. So what is the utility of converting this table into format as table, correct? First, before that, we'll discuss how to convert this in normal table into Excel table. For that, what you have to do, Ronak has already explained in his uh, tutorial. So select this whole table, click on a shortcut, control and T. So my data has a header because my data has a heading. I will make this box ticket and say, okay. Now if you see, it's got converted into table and it will also allow you to rename the table as well, depending on your, whatever the name you want to give, you can uh, name this table as with that name. Okay. Once you got converted this data into table, you need not have to, while you want to refer this table in future, be it under pivot or be it wherever it is or be it in any of the array functions you need not have to come back and select this range you just have to give the table reference the name reference what this table has been given this table two if you refer that it's the control will automatically come to this table now what is the use of having uh, your uh, normal table converted into excel table suppose you want to add a new column here below 2018 as soon as you enter any of the uh, columns and click tab, what it will do, Excel will automatically insert a new row there and the table reference will get automatically changed. Like this. If you want to add one more line, so it will keep on changing it. It will keep on changing the reference. How it can come to the reference and change it? Here there is a small arrow button in the corner of the table. If that is extending, means your table reference is also getting extended. It means your table is your table reference is getting updated. Not only rows, even columns also it will get updated automatically. For example, I would like to add a, a column called condition. If you see the new column got automatically uh, got the formatting of the rest of the table formatting, and if you give any formula here, I will give one small, small e formula here. If 
my sales is greater than 10,000, I will say good, else I will say bad. Sorry for the typo. And close my bracket. Now I'll hit the enter. Just observe what, it, what will happen now. As soon as I hit the enter, bad. Oh, sorry, I forgot to close this. We can read comma. As soon as I hit the enter button, it will fill that whole formula to the end of the table without you doing the control D. Thereby, we'll save a uh, lot of time. If you keep on adding a uh, calculated fields here, you may not have to drag down the formula. Excel table will automatically copy down that uh, formula till the last row of the table. This is the, uh, these are the two major uh, utility of having your table converted into a format as table. Now suppose, can we, there is something called slicers. What do we mean by slicers? Slicers means uh, it is equal to a filter wherein instead of you going and manually uh, clicking on this drop down and selecting the elements what you want or uh, going to sales and in number filter you are uh, selecting greater than or less than. So what you can do is you can add a slicer with a click of a button you can filter out your entire table depending on the slicer selection what you have done. So how to insert the slicer. Uh, click anywhere in this, uh, in this table. Go to table design and there is an option called insert slicer. As soon as you click on that, all the columns in the name which are uh, part of the table will be appearing here. You can add sli uh, slicers on any of them. I choose to add for year, for category and for product and say okay. As soon as I say okay, all three slicers will be created for you. One for year, one for category, and one for product. These will have, your respective slicer will have unique element in that column without any duplicates. Also, I will also give you a summary card wherein, depending on the filter what I choose, my total sales as well as your sales from this table should get automatically calculated. For that, we can use a subtotal function equals subtotal. Total sales means I want a sum of sales. The number for that is uh, nine nine comma and the column to be added is the sales column and close similar way average equals subtotal the so average clearly the uh, number reference is one comma and the range is the same sales column and close it now this total sales and the average sales is showing for this entire table now see how now let us see how slicer will work suppose uh, i want to see the total sales and the transaction only for the year 2015. As soon as you click on 2015 from the year, the year column will automatically catch the filter for 2015 and the rest of the rows will be filtered accordingly. And my summary card will show the total sales for that table only and average sales for the visible sales only. Not only that, you can also put use multiple slicer card on the same data set. For example, in year 2015, you also want to see the category clothing. How much sales happened in the category called clothing. Now the, now the filter will be applied for category table accordingly and only the corresponding rows will be visible. Suppose one more level, I want to see the sales of jersey only. So come to product size slicer and click on jerseys. Now the, uh, the, uh, the filter will be put on product column for jerseys and only the corresponding outcome will be visible. Like this, you can make your table inter interactive one. Thereby, your uh, summary cards and uh, slicers will be will come handy and uh, uh, you can avoid going this tedious cycle of applying filter and with the click of a button, you can summarize your table the way you want it and uh, make it a kind of interactive for the uh, viewer of the table. Now, can we put slicer on my pivot table also? The previous one was normal table. This one is the pivot table. Can we put a slicer on a pivot table as well? Yes, we can put a slicer on pivot table as well. How to do that? Here is already, I have inserted a pivot table using this data set. Place your cursor anywhere in the pivot table. Go to pivot table analyze and click on insert slicer. Already product column is visible here. So what I will do is I will take a slicer for category and say okay. 
now if i click on accessories only those products which are following in the category record accessories the sales for the same will be visible here similarly for bikes similarly for clothing as well as component also now what we are missing is the timeline the uh, slicer depending on your years or date for that uh, instead of putting slicer on year column there is one more slicer button called if you go to pivot table analyzer that is uh, insert timeline this is the slicer only for a date function or a date column so if i if you click on that uh, excel will automatically detect the column wherein the data is in the date format in our case the data is in the date format in the column name called a date let us click on this date and say okay now this date slicer is appearing now now what can i do with this suppose if you see here in the Uh, right hand top corner there is something called month if you click this small arrow down it will give you put a slice it will allow you to put a slice on other elements of the time period as well that is days quarters as well as years so suppose we start with the year in the year 2015 how much sales happened if you want to know just click on the 2015 uh, uh, piece of slicer it will summarize your sales by product for the year 2015 only in that if you want to see category wise again you can come back to our uh, category slicer and click on accessories or bike or clothing or component like this you can slice depending on years as well as categories in one go what if you want to see uh, sales for two years 2016 and 2017 together very simple click and drag and select both 2016 and 2017 now your whole pivot table is summarized for the sales by product for the year 2016 and 2017 also you can also see using category slicer what were my category wise sales for the year 2016 and 2017 now now let us see year and now if you see if you click on quarters now your whole Uh, date slicer will broke down into two layers one is 2015 and in that q1 q2 q3 q4 2016 q1 q2 q3 q4 and same for 2017 and 2018 now if you want to see quarterly sales for respective financial year you can keep clicking the respect to quarters you will come to know how much is sales for that here if you want to take a combo of uh, quarters you can click and drag one quarter or two quarter or three quarter or four quarter and release your uh, 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 right hand click so accordingly the table will get sorted so filtered as per the selection of the filter again you can use your uh, category slicer along with the date slicer as well this is how you can use uh, uh, slicers and date slicers depend uh, on your uh, pivot tables i hope uh, using slicers on table as well as pivot table is clear now now let us see couple of uh, tricks in pivot table the first trick is pivot table grouping here we have a, a pivot table for year and sum of sales now i want to group this year column how can i do that place your cursor in any of the cell in the year right click there and go to the option called group group here we have a pivot table for a year and a sum of sales so what we'll do is let us click on here right click and go to option grouping now there are a lot of grouping options available suppose we want to group the sales only by years so select years and click okay and this whole table uh, will be grouped by years now we want to group it by years as well as quarters and say okay now it will take a quarter in the corresponding year and it will summarize your sales based on that and suppose if you want to group this data not by year and quarter but by year and month it will show only those months in that corresponding years wherein there is a sales so like this you can group your pivot data as per the your requirement 
next excel trip, uh, trick which i want to show is your pivot table sorting often we would like to once you put a pivot table we would want to sort either the number or the text depending on ascending descending or a to z or z to a how to do that for number column if you want to sort it right click on that go to sort since it is number it will give you two option one is smallest to largest the other one is largest to smallest so click on largest to smallest it will sort the sales figures by product from largest to smallest also you can sort this from smallest to largest as well so similarly the product name which are which are in the form of alphabetic you can sort them by a to z or z to a if i click on a to z it will take from a to z and the corresponding cells also will be changed as per this sorting and this way you can do z to a as well so this is how you can quickly sort your content in the pivot table be it number or be it alphabetic now there is a one another small trick called how do we split a pivot table for that i would like to show this workbook wherein i have a uh, data set having around uh, 76 rows on top of this i put a pivot for product and sum of sale if you see here in my rows uh, products are there in the values i have sum of sales and i have put a report filter for, for, for the parameter category observe this to make this function work You, you should have at least one filter parameter in the report filter category now if you see your uh, category filter there are four product categories by name accessories bikes clothing and component if you want to see only accessories what you have to do you have to unselect all and click on accessories and say okay now your whole table will get filtered by accessories and only those product categories which are there in the Uh, category called accessories will be visible and their corresponding sales you can sum up now what if there are 10 to 15 uh, uh, report slicers like this you want to create a separate sheet for each of those uh, report filter category with a click of a button how do we do, do that let us place your cursor in anywhere in the excel table come to pivot table analyze options and there is a second uh, functionality called show report filter pages here pivot table analyze under options show report filter pages click on this option it will tell you show all report filter pages of category which is true because our report filter is category as soon as you click on okay what excel will do is it will cr create as many excel sheets which are there in this Uh, report filter uh, parameters for example in our case there are four uh, components in that report category parameter excel has created four different sheet and it renamed also those sheets by the respective uh, pa parameter component and it is automatically filtered out the respective category in that sheet if you see here accessory sheet the sheet name is accessory and report filter is by default is accessory already similar for bikes similar for clothing similar for component if you want to slice down your complete excel table in a sub table wherein you have a report filter this option will come very much handy with you moving on now can we put a chart on a pivot table is the question the answer is of course and you can can we make it interactive the answer for that question also true how to do to that how can you link a chart with excel table and make it interactive suppose if we have a excel table first layer uh, aggregation is by category and second level aggregation is by product and third level aggregation is sales so since there are more than two level of uh, aggregations there is a possibility of uh, drill down feature in uh, uh, excel um, uh, charts how to do that we'll just i'll just show you in a minute place your cursor anywhere in this excel file you go to insert under that there is a separate category called pivot chart click on pivot chart it will give you a all uh, possible charts which can be put on excel table so in my case 
I will select this chart and click on OK. Right now, Excel has created a chart for me. I'll just get more space here. Yeah, and there are legends here which I don't want. What I will do is I'll go to Pivot Chart Analyze fields and button options and there are five ticks are there first four ticks i don't want these buttons i don't want in my excel chart what i will do i'll just untick them so that uh, my chart area will get increased and i'll uh, retain this expander collapse entire field buttons as it is okay and uh, i will also insert a slicer for this excel table what will i do by what chart analyze insert slicer i will insert slicer for year now your uh, year slicer is ready i will make this chart little bigger okay now how to play around with this chart and make it interactive if you see here the first level aggregation is at the product category and second level aggregation is the corresponding products in that category and these are the sales number suppose you are able to see this plus and minus symbol in the corner of this chart one one says expand entire field and other one says collapse entire field first i will show you collapse entire field click on, click on this minus button see what pivot chart is doing it is collapsing and removing the second level aggregation it is keeping the first level aggregation that is a category it is showing the sales by category for all the years here if you want to focus only on the year 2015 if you use this slicer and click on 2015 all the sales for this uh, product categories for that uh, year 2015 will be visible similarly for 2016 similarly for 2017 now for 2017 you not only want to see the category but also see the products in that category for that you need to expand this chart for that you have to click on this plus symbol it says expand entire field as soon as you click on that your products in that category will pop out so that for respect to financial year you can also see your uh, product category level uh, slicer uh, product category level sales distribution also like this thereby Excel allows you to first level summarize aggregation sum summary also drill down capabilities also it will be able to uh, bring it to you on your table thereby using pivot table pivot chart and slicer you can make your pivot table as well as your pivot chart make it interactive now I would like to show you the extended application of this pivot table slicers and pivot chart and make an interactive excel dashboard wherein with a click of a button you can aggregate and summarize your whole data the way you want i will show you one data set of 1190 employees this is basically a leave data for the period october to march here i have an employee number as a first column second one is department third one is leave tape that is a casual leave or a loss of pay Fourth one is your month, October, November, December, Jan, Feb, March. And fifth one is fourth monthly data, October 1st of, October 2nd of, November 1st of, and November 2nd of, and so on and so forth. And F column shows the number of leave days applied by the employee. This is my raw data. This is the data set. How to create an interactive Excel dashboard using Pivot, Pivot Chart, and Slicers, and um, make it user friendly. Okay. On top of this, what we'll do is we'll put a pivot table wherein we'll have two level of aggregation. One is month and one is fortnightly, and we'll summarize the total number of leaves taken accordingly. First column is month, second column is fortnightly date of the month, and third column is your total leave taken. On top of this, we'll put a slicers and pivot chat and create a dashboard which looks something like this this is nothing but a heading employee leave data 
and we have a department here ap ar finance hr logistic marketing purchase qc and sales these are nothing but your slicers which are built on this pivot table month column again a slicer leave type again a slicer month 50 15 days that is fourth little data again it is a slicer and the number of leave days is nothing but your summary card what i showed you in my uh, earlier uh, excel sheets and this is the pivot chart which is linked to this pivot table here we have three level of aggregation first one is by month and for first one second one is fourth nightly similar aggregations are there here if you collapse it it will show monthly and if you expand it it will show monthly as well as fourth nightly let us see which department is taken more number of leaves it is just a click of a button accounts payable 868 account receivable 662 finance 2298 if you are uh, seeing this summary card that depending on the slicer you are clicking for that department month distribution it is showing also it is showing the number of leave taken by that department for the period of 6 months hr department logistic department marketing purchase qc and sales so on and so forth like this you can slice down and see Which department has taken more number of leaves? If you uh, if you see, finance department is the one which has taken more number of leaves. That is two thousand two ninety eight. Let us focus finance department and see how many casual leaves they have taken and how many pass off pay they have taken. If I click on casual leaves, it it tells me finance department has taken nine hundred fourteen casual leaves. And if I click on loss of pay, it tells finance department has taken thousand three hundred and eighty four loss of pay. It means loss of pay is more. then we can investigate and drill down ki why financial in finance team why there is a more occurrence of the loss of pay we can do a recent analysis for that and come out with a better solution similarly second type of insight i want to see from this chart if you see the monthly distribution of the leave we can see in the month of december 19 the highest number of leaves taken that is 1804 so in the month slicer let us focus only on the in december now we will drill down and see whether the first half of the december more leaves are taken or second half of the december more leaves are taken if you click on expand entire field it will split the data into fourth nightly first half of december and second half of december you can see here december first half is more number of leaves are taken compared to second half of december let us in in this uh, month 15 days slicer let us click on december 19 first half now the focus comes to this let us see whether casual leaves are more or loss of pay is more so first let us select casual leave which will show 320 and loss of pay which is 736 it means in the month of december a lot of employees that to second half of the day, december have taken lot of loss of pay loss of pay type of leave And then organization can uh, go back and check what is the reason that mo most of the employees in second half of the December taken more number of loss of pay and analyze and take the insights out of that. If there is any uh, recommendation or action point to be taken, so this uh, uh, insight will help the organization to take the correct measures. This is not the um, conclusive way of way of doing dashboard. This is just a introductory level of dashboard using this pivot chart and uh, graphs and uh, slicers. and pivot tables we can create variety of uh, pivot uh, variety of uh, pivot linked dashboard and make your reports interactive and user friendly here the user need not have to ask you any question he just himself can uh, focus and drill down the data where his interest points are there and make a insight out of it so this is what the capability of excel which will make it look like a tableau or a power bi type of software which are meant for dashboarding and interactive analysis this is all about uh, dashboarding using excel and last but not the least excel 2019 recently has announced a feature called artificial intelligence in excel that the name it has ideas ideas is available under home tab under this ideas button discover more about your data what ideas will do just take one uh, data set correct right? something like this i will take a sample data set having 76 column 
suppose you got data set and you don't have a time to do the exploratory data analysis and summarize your insight you have very short time uh, putting a pivot table and charts and uh, presenting in a different way the way the user want to it's going to take time in the short possible time how can i get the insights out of this data and the summary also in a ready made format using ideas simple thing just select your uh, data set and click on this button called idea under home tab as soon as you click that what ideas will do is it will apply its machine learning cap capabilities and analyze the data and start giving you the data insights both in the form of excel charts and uh, pivot table and pivot charts see here what it has done it has shown you sales by year and product it summarize your sales by corresponding year and for corresponding products and the sales summary it is given a chart wherein rating this f column rating by year and by category third one is sales increase over the time over the year 15 16 17 how much sales has grown up category accessories had noticeably higher sales it is identified that accessories has a high number of sales compared to other category and there are nine more uh, results like this wherein in each of the chart it try to tell you the insights of the data in the form of pivot table or pivot chart assume for example this first pivot table what you are seeing you like this pivot table and you want to use this pivot table and consume it inside your analytical pane what you should you have to do nothing just there is a below this table there is a uh, option called plus mark and insert pivot table as soon as you click on that the same table will be picked and put it in your excel sheet canvas readily formatted nothing you have to do the uh, pivot uh, rows columns and pivot filters are everything is put and uh, rupee symbol is already by default given and it is already formatted in the in the it's already formatted as number uh, uh, with zero decimals suppose you want to uh, you consume this below chart you want to highlight key accessories has a more number of cells do nothing just click on this insert on pivot chart that pivot chart will be automatically loaded into your excel canvas as a new sheet along with the table or based on which the chart is used the best part is it will also pick the table as well as chart together you need not have to do anything here it is automatic frequency of sales or uh, yeah frequency of sales the frequency of sales if you put a insert this chart in a new new sheet it will show you what is my frequency of sales matlab it will make it it has clustered your sales into buckets and in the respect to buckets how many more number of occurrence of sales that that is trying to show you and not only this suppose you did not like any of this you want to have your own artificial intelligence driven summary out of this table there is a something called ask a question button here if you see here ask a question about your data just place your cursor there and let us ask some question to excel that is for example top 5 products by sales it means you are asking give me the top 5 products by sales and I click on this arrow mark below excel will show you those top 5 products wherein your sales is highest if you want to consume this data and bring it into your excel canvas just click on this in insert pivot chart a new sheet will be created with the pivot table and a pivot chart which is which uh, contains the top five product by sales along with the heading formatted with the uh, axis and uh, let me try some different question i would say top 3 selling categories now excel will get told ki accessories clothing and component these three are the top 3 category which are selling now i want to ask something about uh, rating top 5 rating and say proceed so it it give me in the respect uh, top 5 rating year year wise which are those top 5 rated products in the 2017 there are three products which are rated 100% that is top in 2015 accessories are rated high with 99% uh, rating and year 2016 uh, clothing has highest rating of 99% straight away it will give the answer now let us ask one more type of question wherein sales by 
here and by product if i ask this question what will do it will also see the year by distribution of all the products like this it has year 2015 2016 to 2017 and how my product distribution has happened instead of product let me take a category so that uh, elements are a little lesser and the chart looks even more neater here yeah for each year it is created its own line chart and for the corresponding categories it has defined the sales trend across the year and it also gives summary table isn't it exciting so now we need not have to go to r or python or any other hyphen tools to do to run a machine learning on our data our native excel only has a machine learning technique which will summarize and give you the insights of the data the way you like i want to give you a small tip here if you want to personalize this uh, question answer asking or how the way excel is uh, summarizing your data in the form of be it pivot table or pivot chart for that what you can do is if you observe at the end of every chart it is asking a question to you is this helpful if you click on that there are two buttons yes or no if you, the type of charts what you like if you keep keep, keep clicking yes 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 what excel will do it will do a machine learning customizer based on your usage now excel will start learning the type of chart you being the user would like and next time when you load the new data it will try to give you a similar type of summary so that you need not have to waste time on searching the type of data and type of charts or type of summarized table that you want this is one more added feature of this artificial intelligence under excel under the tab called ideas so it is very exciting and very informative and it will save a lot and lot of lot of time for the users so don't miss out this function and uh, please check out and uh, try to get the best out of this tool so that's it guys these are all the latest excel functions and uh, productivity enhancement tools that you would uh, uh, like to cover today so a lot of questions are uh, uh, come here and we try to resolve all of them one on one basis over the email and by the end of the session we'll also arrange to send you the recorded version of this so that uh, any doubts you have and uh, any of the functions if you want to re revisit you can uh, refer that video and uh, any doubts you have you can get it clarified and uh, thank you so much for your uh, patience listening and have a nice day stay healthy and stay safe thank you so much